Hi, Birdie. Birdie, I would like you to start with your pulley exercise. I want to go ahead and do 50 times up and down like you always do. Go ahead, Birdie. Go. Now, Paulette, is this one of the changes that you've noticed since she's had this new wheelchair? Yes, it is. Uh, since we have this new seating arrangement, we have been noticing that Birdie can sit and do more exercises and longer time, longer amount of time. Oh, good. Uh, she seems more comfortable, and she is really doing much, much better than what she had the, pre the previous seating arrangement, previous wheelchair. Our next client is Jim. Because of Jim's breathing difficulties, we will not be taking the pillows out and having him lay completely flat on the mat. Is that okay? We'll go through it real quick. Okay, we're looking for alignment of the trunk. <clears throat> looking for pelvic mobility. This would be the posterior pelvic tilt. It's very little range. The pelvis isn't moving very much. Anterior pelvic tilt, which we don't have. We have very little anterior pelvic tilt. Looking at the pelvis, the hands on the ASIS, posterior aspect of the pelvis, bringing the leg up. And you feel the pelvis engage, which is right here. Going from behind the knee, bringing the leg up, testing hamstrings. And your hamstrings are tight at this point. He also has problems with his, with his hip rotation. And then looking at the ankle. And then you want to make sure you look at the other side. Check the go ahead and bend this knee, Jim. There you go. Bob, can you hold this knee for me? Just one hand hold there. And checking the opposite side which has a little more range on this side. About 90 degrees on this side. And his leg is in neutral rotation. So the main problems we notice is that he's got limited hip range of motion on the, his left. We have limited hamstring motion on both sides at 90 degrees. We have hip rotation tightness and a little bit, we've got good ankle range. What we found in his, the mat assessment when he was on his back was that he did not have enough hamstring length to come out much further onto foot plates. So we'll have to accommodate that by making sure the foot plates are more in an angle that would, that would suit his particular needs. And because he has an external hip contracture, we need to bring this foot closer to his right foot. So his right foot will be able to meet the foot plate, and the left foot would almost need to be right next to it because of the contracture that, we're, that we have in the hip. And this is kind of a windswept deformity, and we can place both feet together on one foot plate. Goodbye, and thank you for coming to the clinic. Jim's problems include a fixed thoracic kyphotic spine, posterior pelvic tilt, right hip flexion contracture, a left hip adduction contracture, and bilateral knee flexion contractures. The seating strategies are to accommodate those contractures, protect his skin, support his pelvis, and provide a means of mobility. Jim is a good example of what can happen over time with individualized seating. Now he can move himself in his wheelchair eat normally, and no longer needs a gastrostomy tube. This is an immense improvement in his quality of life and also results in tremendous savings in the cost of his daily care.
Our final mat assessment will be with Lee's. All right. Yeah. All right, and what I'm going to have you do is lay down. I'm going to grab a pillow. Okay, hon. And I'd like you to lay your head down on this pillow. All right. Sure will. Why well, do I don't want to put my feet on you? Straight on out is fine. Yeah. I probably should have taken the shoes off. No, I think it'd be okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, and the first thing I'm going to just observe while you're laying here is um, your trunk to see if you have a nice straight trunk. It looks mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. looks really good. Straight. And the next thing I want to do is look and see if you have any fixed contractures in your back or neck area. So let's pull this out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and let your head down. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's nice and flexible and mobile. Mm -hmm. And let's look at your shoulders a little bit. And mm -hmm. oh, they're nice and relaxed. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't have any fixed contractures there. I'm just going to replace the pillow for comfort. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to have you do is bend your knees. And you can put your hands. It, yeah, it does, doesn't it? We'll put your hands right down here. And I'm just going to bring your hips forward like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lift your hips up. You're going to lift a heavy weight. No, actually, it's not too heavy. Really? I'm just going to see. And I'm just looking for symmetry and if you have uh -huh. any fixed contractures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just relax. And I'm just going to move you a little bit each way again, looking for anything that's fixed or flexible, mm -hmm. any tightness. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks good. Mm -hmm. Put my hands behind her pelvis and pull. Go ahead and relax, Lise. Mm -hmm. Just relax down and I'm going to see if you, okay. And you can see the movement in her pelvis, which shows that she has anterior pelvic tilt as well. All right, I'm going to look at your hip range of motion. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do both of them at one time. And I'm holding on to your pelvis. Relax your legs down into my arm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Just mm -hmm. relax them down. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring them up. Just me. You don't need to help me. Mm -hmm. Relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, right there. Good. And now I'm going to measure this. And Bob, if you can help me hold her legs in this position. We want to measure this, finding the bony landmarks with the goniometer. Okay, the next part of the evaluation is looking at the knee range of motion. Thank you, Bob. Um, go ahead and let your legs come down. What I like to do for this part of the evaluation is make sure that the hip is in the same position that it was that we measured. And then putting your hand behind the knee on the hamstring tendons, then you can relax their leg down and at least just let me take your leg and I'm going to come up nice and slow and determine your hamstring length. Just about right there. And so this is when I'd ask Bob to help me again to hold this leg in this position so I can measure this. The next part of the evaluation, I'm going to have you sit up on the mat. So I'm going to help you go ahead and roll towards me okay. and then let your feet up off the side. All right. I'll help you sit up. Makes it a little easier All for right. you. Okay. Oh, we did it. Yeah. Let me scoot your bottom back. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, Bob, if you could bring the mirror over so that I can see what's going on with her trunk. And also, um, we're going to need to have a little more support for her feet because her feet cannot reach the ground. About four, five inches. Looking at her spine is important to see how, what the curve is and also to inspect her spinous processes to see if she has any projections that we need to be careful and aware as far as pressure and possible skin breakdown. Um, I don't feel any pressure problems and normally you would disrobe them and also look at the, uh, if there are any curves that we need to be aware of. But her shoulders are the correct height and her back looks to be very straight. So that's nothing we need to be concerned about. What I'm going to look at now is uh, to see how your trunk is doing. And obviously, you've got nice trunk control. You're able to sit here without any assistance. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll put my hands on your pelvis. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring your pelvis forward and see how much your trunk elongates and using the mirror to guide me. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You relax your arms down so I can see. OK. Good. And, oh, excuse me, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, if I rocked her pelvis into more of a posterior pelvic tilt, what happens to her chest and her trunk 
versus if I give her some nice support behind Ooh, her pelvis. That feels better. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and then determining her back contours and where she likes her pelvis to be held in space. Right there. Right there. Elise, can you take a deep breath and then exhale and relax? And I'm just observing it to see where her body goes. If she falls more forward when she does that, then I would need to give her a little more recline in the chair, a little more assistance with gravitational pull to have her go in more of a posterior position. The other thing you want to be aware of is her pelvis, making sure it's in a neutral position. So I will put my hands on the crest of her pelvis and observe if they are level. And also if they're in the proper position so they're not rotated, her pelvis is not rotated. And she is level and not rotated, her knees are even, feet are well supported. Okay, looks good. Can't find anything wrong with me, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to measure Lise, and Bob, could you help me with this? Because it's important to get a proper measurement. If we use a clipboard or something solid, it makes it easier. And I'll have you hold it from the back, and Lise, put your hand up here. And we'll put her pelvis where it should be. There we go. And what I'll do is take this measurement from the back of this board out to behind her, her knee, which would be about right here, and that's 18 inches. And then if you could hold it onto this hip right here. And then we'll take a measurement of her, the width of her hips. Okay, which is 14 inches. Another important measurement would be to measure from behind the knee down to the floor, usually with them wearing the shoes that they'll be propelling with. And what type of shoes do you normally wear, Lise? Your slippers? You prefer yes. to wear your slippers? Yeah. So what we'll do yes. is we'll place her slipper on mm -hmm. her foot, and that will give us the true mm -hmm. seat to floor height. Lise's problems include shortness of breath, difficulty propelling her chair, and discomfort. Her seating strategies are to conserve energy, support her pelvis, and provide comfort. The solutions are, Lee's needs a wheelchair that fits her measurements, a lightweight wheelchair, one that is low to the floor, with contoured foam cushion and a solid seat insert. This allows her feet to touch the floor and her arms to easily reach the wheels. The seat cushion is the proper length to provide support to her thighs, but short enough to prevent cutting into the back of her legs. To conserve energy, we chose a forward axle plate and a smaller wheel diameter for better hand placement. In addition, the armrests are removable if she desires.